Here we go. Just days after Michael Cohen's explosive congressional testimony, Rep. Gerald Nadler, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, issued a wave of letters seeking information from 81 yes, 81 people and organizations. Nadler's requests marked the opening salvo in what promises to be a heated legal and political battle between the White House and Congress. Nadler's opening gambit is more sledgehammer than scalpel, carrying risks and potential rewards. Strategically, the requests lack a coherent topical focus. Nadler could find himself buried in irrelevant materials and, ultimately, bogged down in litigation over whether and to what extent parties must produce evidence to him. On the reward side, however, you'll never know if you don't ask. By serving requests to nearly every person in Trump's orbit, Nadler ensured that he will have plenty of raw materials to work with. This is often how criminal investigations work, gather all the material possible, then winnow it down to the most relevant and probative information upon which to assess potential charges. Politically, Nadler served notice that he does not intend to take half measures and that he is spoiling for a fight. On the other hand, Nadler's broad-based approach left the political door swinging wide open for Trump and those around him to decry the investigation as an unfocused, overbroad big fat fishing expedition and, of course, to reprise the familiar witch hunt rallying cry. Ultimately, we should expect this battle to land in the courts. Congress may step up its tactics from informal letters, which politely but firmly request the recipient to provide information, to subpoenas, which compel the witness to provide information, like it or not. Subpoena recipients in and around the White House, in turn, may resist by invoking executive privilege arguing, essentially that internal communications between the president and his advisors are confidential and protected from disclosure. All this could culminate in the most consequential legal battle over executive privilege since the Richard Nixon case in 1974. The Supreme Court unanimously rejected Nixon's executive privilege claim over tape recordings of internal White House conversations, Nixon resigned 16 days after losing the decision.